So now we want to get started and create a deep learning model. I have a Jupyter Notebook that I have created before that has uh, all kinds of code in it. And I'll make it available on my GitHub repository afterwards when we're done with this video series. So a little bit about CoLab here. Uh, you can create uh, Jupyter Notebooks here. You can also install libraries if they're not in here. Many of the libraries you're going to need is already installed. You can also get an idea about what is available to you. The first thing you should do if, you, if you're going to be working with, uh, if you're going to be training a deep neural net, you need to make sure that you have the, the capacity of processing speed. You cannot do it on a CPU. You need to use a GPU. So you need to go to this runtime. You need to go to change runtime type and make sure it sits at a GPU here. Normally, it will show up with none like this. And that indicates you will be using the CPU. So make sure you choose the GPU. OK, so set that to GPU. Save it. And now that you have uh, the GPU, make sure you're connected. So you click Connect. And it's connecting. And it will give you a check mark when it's done connecting. So initialize all these libraries. OK, so now you connect it, and you can see uh, how much how much space you got over here. So the first thing you might want to do is get an idea of what's available to you here, because it's going to be important when you set your parameters. There's this nice little code here you can use. I'm going to run this command. And it goes through some installations. And then it goes out and get what it needs and put the results below. So once it's done running here, we'll get rid of all this stuff. OK, so now it's installed. Now I want to get some information about it. And I wrote a little extra print statements here to kind of see it in, in a, a different uh, size, like a gigabyte size. So I run this. So this tells me that I have 12.8 gigabytes available as a GPU memory, which is kind of nice to have because we're going to need it. OK, and it's running on a Tesla T4 uh, GPU. So it's an NVIDIA Tesla T4. I want to get some additional information about the commands I used up here. You can click these links here and, and go out and look at it yourself. The next thing we want to do is find out you know, all these other parameters that are in this CoLab environment. Again, I have a little code snippets here you can run. And when you run these, you can see you're getting a lot of information. And uh, there's all kinds of information about the environment. And you can see how many CPUs you have and, and so forth. So there's some additional information you can look up yourself. So now that we're done here, you can see all kinds of information. So anyways, I'll let you take a look at those and uh, extract from whatever you need from those. One thing we can do is we can look and see what is already installed on this, uh, this CoLab repository. One way you can do that is use this pip list command and use a grep. I think grep, uh, according to what I found out here, is it's a Unix Linux kind of filter that you can search for specific patterns. And by using this E flag here, you can just list the different libraries after the, the, the grep command. And when you run it, you can see it produces um, a bunch of libraries that are already installed that relates to what I searched for here. So I know I got fast AI, which I'm going to need for this video. There's also Keras. There's uh, TensorFlow. Uh, one thing, though, is that you don't get the latest and greatest here. It's, it's whatever 1.15 version of TensorFlow. So in a later video, I'll show you how you can get the latest version in here so you can use 2.0, which is the, the one that's going to be used going forward. Um, so now let's uh, start uh, doing some deep learning. The first thing you want to do is input some libraries, like the operating system library. We're going to need it for files, etc. Uh, from FastAI, we're going to import everything from the vision uh, module. And we're also going to need to come up with some additional uh, fast AI functionality, like we want to get the metrics 
Uh, we're going to get accuracy and error rate from the metrics module. So I'm going to run this. And it's going to load up all these libraries. And now that is done, I need to have access to my file system. So I'm going to mount my file system. And again, I got to authorize this. So I go and choose my Google account. Yes, I agree to all this stuff. Allow that and copy the token. Go back into your notebook and paste it and hit enter. So to paste it, you use control V and then you just hit enter. Now it's mounted at this location. So I can click on this files folder. I can go to this location, drive and my drive. And under the x-ray folder, there's my training folders, my normal and pneumonia training folder in both the test and the training uh, folder system. So the next thing to do is to write some Python script that actually is going to map it, the path to these folders. So I created a, a training data directory and a test data directory. And I'm using the library, the OS library, to create those paths. So I use the path function, use the join method to join the data root, which is this. And I'm going to join it to the training folder over here and to the test folder. So I can run this like so. Next thing I want to do is I have, since this is going to be a binary classifier, what I want to do is I want to create two classes, one for normal and one for pneumonia. So I'm going to create a variable to hold those. So I'm going to run this. So this image data bunch is a factory method that has more than one way you can get your images. It, one of them says from folder. You can also, you can also get it from, um, let me see if I can find it here. Um, you can get it from CSVs and you can get them from data frames. So those are some of the options from lists. You can see them here. So there's many ways of getting the easiest one is probably from folder. And that's what I'm going to be using. So what you want to do is you want to pass in your training data set. And then what it's going to do is it's going to grab your images. When you do it this way, it's going to look in the training folder, which is the one over here. And it's going to grab whatever it needs that matches your classes. And keep in mind, my classes is normal and pneumonia. So it's going to match those. But what it's also going to do is keep in mind, I had 200 images in the normal folder and 200 image in pneumonia for training. It's going to grab those and it's going to set aside 20% for its validation purposes. So it's going to use 20% of the 200 images from each folder to validate the results of the training. Now, earlier, we checked the, the, GP, the GPU, remember up here, it says 12.72 gigabytes free in RAM. Now, the reason that might be uh, interesting is because I'm going to try to get a batch size, which is this BS parameter, as large as possible. And what that means is it's going to randomly grab 64 images at a time and throw it onto that GPU and parallel process all of them. That way it saves a lot of time for us to do. If you don't have a lot of memory, you will have to start reducing this batch size. So this is a, what's called a mini batch of 64. I'm going to try to put as much as I can on here so it, it goes faster when it trains. So I'm using 64. It seems to work at this size uh, GPU memory. Um, then you have this get transforms functionality. So that's one of the parameters being set. The size indicates the size of the images that I want to use. It's going to convert it into a 224 by 224. And one of the reasons is because I'm using a, a model, an architecture that is called ResNet 50, which is a very popular model. And it, it, it's been trained on size of 224 by 224 pixels. So that's what I'm going to be using. This number of workers here, it seems to be some IO process stuff. So I just set it to six. There's some information down here. You can read up on that and see if you can make sense out of it. Uh, and then we're going to normalize the data uh, by using the, this, the 
uh, statistics that was the ResNet 50 model was trained on. So we're going to use the same stats and normalize our data. So that's what's happening here. Uh, one thing you can do, you have these you know functions and, and these factory methods. If you want to find out about them, you can just type the word doc in front of it and then do a shift enter. And it pops up this stuff here. So it tells you a little bit about the functionality. Another thing you can do is click on this here, show in docs, and it will take you over to the fast AI documentation. So here is about the image data bunch, and here it tells you uh, what goes into this image data bunch. And it tells you about the methods you can use. So you can read uh, up on each one of those functionalities here. Uh, another thing you can do, if you put one question mark here, filters, I should call it parameters, hyperparameters were uh, in this um, image data bunch was the get transforms. So what I can do is I can say get transforms and put a question mark in front of it, hit enter, and it gives you the signature over here, what, what goes into it. And notice a lot of, uh, there is a parameter set for you already. Notice it's going to, it's not going to flip vertically, but it's going to rotate by 10% or, or by a factor of 10. I'm not sure if it's percent or not. There's zooming, there's lighting, uh, warping, and so forth. And it's going to do some flips. So it will manipulate, uh, by default, it will manipulate your image 